Hi guys, it's me again, Mike from Viz Academy. Today we're going to talk a little bit about 360 rendering. What 360 rendering really is. It's very simple yet quite uh, original type of rendering because it allows your viewers to look around uh, inside of the buildings that you're going to be rendering or just uh, uh, it's also going to allow you to create a virtual tour. Uh, what kind of client you should be expecting to get uh, or let's say who really uses this? Well, mostly those are going to be interior designers and property developers. So uh, long story short, it's quite fun to do. And typically it requires a little bit more thinking when it comes to modeling because every wall of your building needs to be developed. Uh, so let's just uh, jump into 3ds Max and see how can we create this kind of uh, renders and uh, what rules do we need to follow. Uh, so first thing first, we're going to remove one of the cameras that I already created and we're just going to uh, create a new one. So as I mentioned, you need to make sure that your scene is going to be complete. Uh, in most of the cases, you want to ensure that all of the walls are going to be properly developed. Uh, that's really important. Next is the background. You should have some kind of background that's going to be at least um, well, good looking. It doesn't have to be uh, 360, but it should at least be decent because your cameras are going to be placed in multiple spots. So it kind of has to follow. Uh, so this building I created a well, approximately a year ago. So I decided that today we're going to uh, create a few 360s out of it. So uh, what exactly can we uh, or how do we start creating our 360s? First thing we need to go to creation panel, pick uh, cameras, and then we're going to create a Corona camera. Really as simple as that, we create our first camera and that's it. But this is not yet a spherical camera. This is a regular camera that uh, we can pretty much see as well we go. Uh, so how do we make this camera into a spherical one? First thing you need to remember is that you should or let's say you are supposed to turn off the target and not because uh, it's going to be problematic in any sense. It's not going to destroy anything in your scene, but it may be a little bit chaotic if you will have it. So that's the first thing I would do. Next, we're going to ensure that the setting of our camera is going to be more or less proper. So you want to place your camera somewhere around the height that typical a camera would be placed because, um, well, if Okay, if you're planning to put your 360s into some kind of VR glasses, you definitely want to place your camera somewhere around 160, 170, because that's pretty much the height your typical viewers are going to be. Um, you want to be a little bit lower than the typical um, viewers eyesight, but uh, still not too low because we don't want to have the uh, frog perspective or we don't want to be too close to the ground because it's going to look really bad. So. Okay, so that's the first thing. So the uh, movement of your camera. So once your camera is properly placed in position, you want to make sure that you also rotate it correctly. So the rotation is going to be key here. Uh, you want to ensure that uh, the X rotation is going to be exactly 90 or minus 90, depending on what kind of camera you're going to be creating. Y axis needs to be zero. You don't want to have this kind of spin. This is important. And when it comes to Z value, it doesn't matter because we can always spin our cameras and we will be creating this uh, as a 360. So you might as well just place your camera and or make your camera look at the most interesting part of your shot. So it's going to be easier for you to set it up later. Okay, so about the photographic parameters that we have, we pretty much can close it. We don't add a depth of field motion blur. Typically, you don't. Also, make sure that the automatic vertical tilt is also off because uh, in some cases when you will be rotating the camera, it may not update and you're going to uh, end up with a little bit distorted image. So what does this distorted image mean we're going to jump into it in a second. But now what uh, do we really need to do to make this camera um, a spherical camera is to simply click on type and pick 
spherical. So a spherical camera is also going to have a little bit different uh, icon or let's say, um, yeah, it's pretty much an icon. It's a, now it's, uh, it looks like a camera that uh, pretty much is 360 because it has a lot of lens on it. Very interesting uh, stuff. So um, this is your camera setup. So this is going to be super important. But the next rule that we have to also follow is the common tab setup. So we click on render setup, we go to output size. And in this case, we're going to input two in image aspect ratio, and uh, make sure that the pixel aspect ratio is set to one, but the image aspect ratio needs to be two. So what is the ideal size for renders like that? Typically, you want to go a little bit lower for previews because you don't want to over render all of this stuff. Um, as you can imagine, because we will be looking only at a part of the image at a time, it has to be huge because we're not going to be displaying the whole image at once, we're going to be only focusing on some parts of it. So obviously, we need high resolution in this case. So long story short, something around 4k is your starting point, but this is still going to be low, you want to go at least 6000 when it comes to the width of your image. But ideal really is going to be at around 8k. Quite a lot. Yes, it will render for a little bit longer, but it's worth it. Uh, so this is pretty much all the setup we need to remember about there is no magical thing that you need to click in the performance, you're pretty much set up this uh, shot as you normally would. So let's just start rendering. And in my case, it may take us a few seconds longer to render this out. So let's just wait um, a little bit uh, for that to happen. Because I also by mistake changed the camera. So we will try to go through the most common problems with this kind of renders and how to avoid them. So first thing first, as you can see, the camera is already set up perfectly. And um, if we, for example, change the camera's rotation by a little bit, and well, uh, by a little bit, I mean, uh, we're going to introduce some kind of um, unfortunate X or Y rotation, our 360 is going to pretty much look a little bit strange. It's a very interesting, I would say, um, uh, it's a very interesting looks because well, it's a little bit more dynamic, but you're not going to have good time viewing it on any kind of web viewer. Uh, so you definitely want to avoid that in the future. Uh, that really is going to be the essence here. So uh, no Y rotation, no X rotation, uh, sorry, X rotation needs to be 90. Otherwise, it's going to be distorted. And uh, we're always going to either have and this feeling that uh, we're falling or we're skewed a little bit. And that's not a good looks for any of your renderings. Uh, so pretty much pretty neat uh, scene. And uh, let's just now uh, continue setting it up. So uh, what else can we do with projection and VR? So typically, you have a few more options. And those are a cylindrical view and cube map plus fish eye lens. I really like all of them. Uh, but I typically only use fish eye lens for some of my clients because yes, it gives you that extra view that nobody really delivers. So if you want to be a uh, if you want to have something interesting for your Instagram, or your portfolio, this is a very nice idea. So um, going back to cube map, cube map is a type of spherical map that's uh, that's supposed to be um, projected onto a box, you set uh, the common parameters to as image aspect ratio one to six. So it pretty much stretches all the way. It is very interesting to use because it saves you a little bit of render time because you can uh, cut a few pixels when you will be uh, using it. But long story short, it's not that much of a deal. Uh, because we're going to be using fast computers and really a nice rendering setup. So uh, when it comes to rendering in spherical, you notice that well, now once my camera is set to spherical, uh, we're pretty much creating this whole panorama, you might be acquainted with this kind of rendering uh, from your let's say, uh, phones, because 
pretty much everybody and their grandma took a panorama photo at some nice site. So you're definitely going to at least understand the, the idea behind it. Uh, so what can we do about those cameras and where do we place them? You want to place them somewhere around your scene, obviously, but uh, make sure that you're always going to be placing them a little bit further away from walls and furniture, because if you're going to be too close to them, I, there is a chance that uh, if there's no space in between, you're just going to be rendering a small uh, portion of a wall for half an hour which is going to be a waste because we want to be able to really have a look at the interior. So, okay, this looks fine. I like it. But now once we have all of this set up and well, what do we do with the renders? What do we really want to, uh, where do we put them? Uh, there are few options uh, how to handle this kind of images. The most common way of handling is going to be Google Photos because it allows you to quickly uh, just put in those images in your album and you can just go ahead and add them in. But this really requires a little bit of uh, extra metadata. And that's pretty much uh, going to mean that you're going to have to inject some kind of uh, extra line of code a lot of unnecessary work that um, I'm going to describe to my students at one point, probably even today. Uh, so we're going to use a different method, which is way easier and it doesn't require any kind of coding. So we're going to go to a Kula a co, that, uh, that co and we're just going to go to upload. Yes, you will have to log in to get it, but it's absolutely free. So don't worry. Uh, create a tour. Um, depending on what tour you're going to be creating, you're probably going to have to name it in some, uh, well, smart way because you definitely don't want to uh, just add in uh, something like that. That never looks professional. So just make sure that you add the name of the project or even your name as the artist so everybody knows uh, who created this beauty. So. We're just going to wait for all of the images to uh, upload and we can now. Um, OK, so VA tour and let's just go for post. And now we're just going to wait a few seconds before we jump into a second screen. And now we have the main UI of uh, Kula.co. OK, so wh what can we do here? You can pretty much do the same as uh, as we did a second ago with our Google Maps uh, or sorry, Google Photos. So we're just going to move the plus sign. So it's going to be pretty much where we start looking at this image whenever we revisit this uh, particular shot. We can also add points that will lead to another image. And how do we do it? We simply go for hotspot and we create this well icon and we just uh, set its width. So um, how do we use it? We simply select it and then we go for action and we go to, for example, to another post. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you understand that in this case, we need to know where uh, our elements are supposed to be. So let's just put it here. And now this is going to allow us to jump from one element to another. So let's save this. And let's just jump into the next post and we're going to be able to uh, pretty much just do it instantly. So this is pretty much how you can use it. And uh, we can just preview everything. Uh, Kula is absolutely easy to use. And I recommend it because well, it's fun. It also allows you to add text and few, uh, let's say, um, strange, but useful filters, for example, uh, this sunny filter that we can uh, just add a little bit of lens, which is always fun because it's a little bit uh, extra something that's going to be uh, well um, giving your um, viewers a little bit more immersion. So um, visit uh, Kula.co if you want to add uh, your images here. And uh, obviously, we're going to be able to explore our 360s in no time. If you want to learn more about uh, 3D rendering and how to create the scenes that uh, 
like the one I just shown you, uh, make sure to visit our website, that's uh, Viz Academy Co UK, and check the available dates for our training. Um, log in, sign up, and make sure to join our team. So thank you very much, and uh, well, we're going to see each other next time in the next video. So like and subscribe, and bye-bye.